Greetings. Welcome to the Kingdom Cultural Center. Now, in my other last session, I, we was in Matthew, the sixth chapter of the Constitution, and sixth chapter, the 25th verse, and I'm going to read to you, once again, his word. Now, he gives a command. The Lord Jesus gives a command. Now, if you're speaking to the disciples, but it applies to us as well. Listen. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you should eat, what you should drink, nor about what your body, what you will put on, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Jesus is saying that. King Jesus, not the religious man Jesus, no such animal. And I boldly say that. He doesn't want us to worry. He wants our faith to be put in him. Now, you'll find out later on as we move on down in this, in this scripture that it's the kingdom. See, when Jesus first came on the scene, I want you to understand, when he first came on the scene, let's go to the fourth chapter of Matthew. So I want you, I want you to, I always like to go and um, reference and read the scripture that entails um, what I'm saying. Put, give, it, give it some clarification. When Jesus left, after coming out of the wilderness, being tempted of the evil one, the devil, and by the way, if, <laughs> if you believe in the devil, you got to believe in God. One, one or the other. One can't exist without the other. But listen, Jesus made this statement. There was a statement made, and when, when he first came out of, God, um, out of the wilderness, here's what, what was said. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What is the kingdom? It's his government. And this is what he's were reclaiming. When Adam lost it, Jesus came back and reclaimed it. Now, here's something that I want you, many of you may have a, a problem understanding. How is the kingdom here? It lives within you. What is the kingdom? It's the Holy Spirit, his government. That's why Jesus made the statement, you must be, he told Nicodemus, you must be born again. That transformation it's one from heaven to you, from the king to you. Because as you may stand in your present condition without the Holy Spirit, you're lost. You can bank on that. You're lost. So the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, you'll hear about this kingdom all the time. Even Jesus made the statement, seek first making it a priority, the kingdom of heaven. You know, now I want you to understand something. This thing about kingdom did not come from a friend of mine that I know, never met him, but he communicated with me through email on several occasions, even in his busiest time. And I'm kind of glad I didn't meet him because many of the individuals that met him haven't done anything about the kingdom, but they, they followed him because they got popularity. And his name is Dr. Miles Monroe. Um, ever since then, he's been gone. Nobody had done anything about it. The Lord gave me this assignment, and then my wife an assignment to write, to create a website in regard to that. And I showed it to Dr. Miles Monroe. And not long after that, he was gone. It was almost like... Lord had me to show it to him, and he, he communicated, and he liked it, you know. But see, I can't talk about anything else but the kingdom. He didn't give me that no, no other assignment. 
My assignment is to communicate to the world through print, through way for YouTube. And if he got any other memes he want me to do, I'm quite sure he'll provide me with the finance to do it and open the doors. Until then, I'm set right here. I'm not going nowhere without the guidance of the Holy Spirit. See, and I'm going to tell you, oh, I, I just want to say this. I just come up. I told you from time to time I will kind of come over here and say certain things and then come back here and come over here and say certain things and come back here. But I want to say this. Anytime you can key off of this, anytime you hear somebody say, the Lord want me to do this, he ordained me for this, he ordained me for that, he wants me to do this, God will provide you with the medium, with the finance to do it. You will not have to beg, borrow, cheat, or steal. God will provide you with it. He will give you just enough to, uh, 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 to achieve your purpose that he has for your life. I'm a living witness. My wife is a living witness. So when you hear people saying, well, send me this and send me that, you should be able to call them in question. If the Lord really, if he really called you to do something, he, why don't he provide you with the necessary tools for it? When God had us, when the Lord God, my father had me to, 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 to write, build this website, my wife and I, and she's a man, I'm going to tell you, uh, it wouldn't be up uh, it, it, the way it is now if it wasn't for her. She builds it, I write it. Uh, I, I mean, she's really the, the, the backbone of this engine. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I ain't taking no credit for that. And she puts it out there, and she writes, and she writes, and, and, and God, and we have the same mindset. I can't begin to tell you what I think, and she would write, or what she think, and I would write. I can't begin to tell you how much we are one in the Word. We are one in the kingdom. We are one. So... I want you to say, when God is in something, he operated very proficiently. It works. It works. When the time is right, he will operate. So I don't have to start browbeating, begging, or, or saying, send me this or send me. No. He'll move with some, somebody's heart. When he wants... When he wants you to do something. You hear somebody say, God told me to do this and God want me to do that. He'll provide them with the means, the, 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 the assets to do it. I'm convinced of that. So when I hear people talk about, hey, man, you know, the Lord told me to do this. The Lord, they, a lot of people just lie on my father all the time. And they get these big mega churches, and you find out you gotta support the church instead of the people who are in the church and the poor. You know something? I'm gonna tell you something. Number principle. You know, God, the Lord never told the Lord Jesus never told anybody to pay tithes. Check it out. I back my hey. I'm standing on. It. He never told anyone to pay tithes. He said, "Give, and it shall be given." He didn't say, "Give tithes." We give, many people give to the preacher. And, come, and he winds up living in a lavish home, driving lavish cars, and the, his parishioners, I mean, his parishioners, are, they're, they're starving. You're going to reap what you sow, man. But if God is in it, if he told you to do something, he will provide. He will provide. Let us turn now back to Matthew. In the 26 verse and 6 chapter, he goes on to say, this is what my king says. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather in bonds. Yet 
your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not more value than they that, than they? Which of you, by worry, can do, can add one cupid to your statue? In other words, you can't add, by worrying, what you going to do? Trust in the Lord. Now, many of you ask God for something, and you, the only time you ask him for something is when you get your, your, your rump in the knickers. Your knickers in the problem. When you want something. When somebody dies in your family, and automatically you put them in heaven, and you haven't picked up God's constitution in years. Get a clue. Just because you attend a religious organization called the church, and you go there every Sunday or every Wednesday night, that doesn't know. It's his word that counts. I can't say it enough. It's his word. You know, there was a situation where Jesus said, and you can go to my website, go, go to the website, you'll find I got, I got thousands of articles there that I've written and my wife has written. And you see, I stand behind it because the Lord God gave me to write that. <laughs> I ain't going to say, well, no, no. He gave me to write that. If you notice in my writing, I don't tell you about current events and none of that. I stick with the kingdom because that's what he has ordained me for. He protected me in my old life and got me here. And I speak boldly about the kingdom message. I don't claim to be no Christian. People call themselves Christian, but they really don't know. You know, if you want to know about that, in, 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 in Antioch, the first time you ever heard that word Christian was in Antioch. And guess what? God never called them. Jesus never called them that. The people called them Christian. And because he Christ, Christ-like. But hey, you look at today. Everybody, many people call themselves Christians, and they live uh, all kind of lives. They shack, they live with one another, they're, they're, they're homosexuals. They, they were, look at God's standard. Look at his principles. And then you compare his principles to your lifestyle. You compare his principles to the way you live. You compare his principle to the spirit that you operate from. And you'll find, if you find there's a difference, you better check yourself. You got to check yourself. Because God is not a God or author of confusion. God isn't the God of chaos. He sent his son so his son's name will be the key to getting to him when you want to talk about something or you want something. And you got to live something. You can't live old shabby life and then you want God to, 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 to bless you. Look, you know, there's things that you got to know. In order for you to know about the, what the traffic light means when you're driving your automobile, you have to already study the manual. And you'll find that the red light means stop, the yellow, the amber light means caution, and the green light means go. And many of you don't do it. Some of you have the audacity to put it in your windshield as you, in your, on your automobile. Give it a break. People of the kingdom, kingdom citizens, are not like sheep. They follow his word. And we have so many folk that are like sheep. You're like a leaf in the fall, in the autumn, where the wind blows and it blows and you blow your hair and blow your hair because you have no solid foundation. The word of God is your foundation. Not sometime, 
Not when you feel like it. And not with your multiple opinions. Opinions is like blood. Everybody have some. Think. When you start becoming opinionated, go to the word and see where it lines up with his word. I have a lot of thoughts on a lot of things, but I don't express it. I always go to the word. That's why you never see me out there arguing and debating. No. I have one assignment. The kingdom message. Now, let's, let us go on. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. The 28th verse of the 6th chapter of Matthew. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lily of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow thrown into the oven, will he not much more close you of little, you of little faith? Now let me, let me share something this with you. Here's one of the powerful functions of believing and seeking the kingdom. Are you ready for this? You don't worry. I don't worry about nothing. The little simple things that may be simple to you, and I see God, and I, I, I know details about things. I was telling, telling my son today how the squirrels in my yard just, you know, my wife and I, we rent a house. We, we don't own anything. We rent. And see, when we're gone, we're gone. And the squirrels were really a pain. They always got into the bird feeder. They always, and I came out one a, a couple of months ago. I think it was about, about six weeks ago. And I, taught, I told my wife, I ain't buying no more food. I'm sure. Now, I'm, I'm sharing this with you so you can understand. When, when, when you walk up right before the Lord and stay in his word, God will, he will honor your request. The father, my father will honor your request. I call him father all the time. I use God sometimes too, so you can understand what I mean or who I'm talking about. But the squirrels used to always get in the, the bird's feet. It used to just aggravate me. And but here's something. I said, Lord, send some hawks here, over here, and have a feast on these squirrels. Now to you it may seem simplex. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I was serious. So a few weeks went by. Never, I didn't, I didn't see the squirrels over there. I filled it up with bird's feet. I saw the birds go over there. When I walk out the door, the birds would fly away, you know, and they'll fly back out there, go back in or whatever. And but I didn't see no squirrels. And I heard this little noise in the in the, next to our woods. You hear air, you know, uh, if you know the sound of a hawk, you know. And I said, eh, eh, maybe so. So today, I was sitting in this morning, <laughs> and I saw this big hawk, first time hawks ever come around us, flew under our tree, the tree was in our yard. The wingspan was like this, one wing. I says, whoa. And I wonder, and we did, and the squirrel used to, they, they stopped going around the bird feed and started going up this tree. and I, the, the hawks was coming down, chasing the squirrels. <laughs> See, when you live according to God's word and you do what's right and you follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, he will guide you. He'll take care of you. I'm going to go again with this scripture. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, not yours. And all these things, everything will be added unto you. 
Don't seek out riches and fame. Seek out obeying his word. And he'll bless you. Those things will pour on you. He'll give you what you need. Well, that's all I got to say right now. I have a lot more to say, but my time is up. But I want you to understand something. I'm going to say it over and over again. Your faith in God's word, in God's word, not your faith in your religion, is your greatest asset in the kingdom. Stand strong on that. Be unwavered in that. And don't let nothing change you from that. Until next time, be strong and stay encouraged. Thank you.